Hello, my name is Alpesh Doshi and I'm the director of IVF London and the consultant embryologist here as well. Today we're going to be talking a bit about our distance learning certificate in clinical embryology and we have an opportunity to show you a real-time clinical IVF laboratory. We know that there is a big need for training in clinical embryology around the world and hopefully this video encaptures some of those elements in terms of what a real-time IVF lab looks like. So we're going to be starting with a bit of equipment here. So before we actually touch on the equipment, let me talk a bit about the air quality in an IVF lab. Typically, we would need around 30 to 40 pascals air pressure in the laboratory. So you can see that there is grills on the top of the laboratory here, which maintain a positive air pressure. The idea of positive air pressure is so that the clean air that comes into the laboratory is filtered through the several filters including HEPA filtration and activated carbon filtration. And the positive pressure pushes, la uh, pushes air out of the laboratory maintaining a very clean state. So that's a bit about the air quality that comes in. Typically there are about 25 air changes an hour in the laboratory, again to maintain a very aseptic and clean environment and this is the air that your embryos are breathing in the incubator. Going on to the equipment, we have a class 2 uh, cabinet here which again is providing the clean grade A air for the manipulations of the embryos and again we know that as part of the European Cells and Tissue Directives, embryos and oocytes can only be um, manipulated in a grade A air environment. So this is where all the oocyte screening or the follicular uh, fluid is screened where the embryos are also manipulated as well or embryo transfer happens. Even the freezing of the embryos happens in, in a class 2 cabinet. Moving forward we have the uh, physiological cabinet here which is what we call an IVF chamber and uh, this chamber here is the advantage is that it has uh, 37 degree uh, maintenance of temperature in there and there is a 6% carbon dioxide being blown as well. So we know that these two parameters such as temperature and pH are extremely important whilst gametes and embryos are being manipulated, keeping them in a very physiological state whilst they're being observed and when manipulations are being done. So it is quite important that with all sites, we maintain the temperature and pH at all times, even during manipulations such as stripping the eggs for XC and so on. These are the big box incubators, which again has um, temperature and CO2 being catered for. The only thing that we use these incubators for nowadays is equilibrating the dishes rather than performing any embryo culture. All embryo culture is now performed in a gas atmosphere of 5% oxygen and 6% carbon dioxide. So here we have um, the classic benchtop incubators which are um, being maintained at 37 degrees C, 6% carbon dioxide and 5% oxygen. As I said, there's enough evidence and papers out there that are suggesting that all embryo culture should be happening in a re reduced oxygen concentration, such as 5%. So these are the benchtop incubators. The advantage of the benchtop incubators is that there's a rapid recovery rate from a temperature perspective as well as a pH perspective because the whole environment for embryo culture is quite small and we will show you what one of these chambers looks like. You can fit four dishes in there. So all the gases are centralized in our laboratory here and this was one of the bigger challenges that we had when we designed this lab is to try and bring all the gas into the middle island. The idea is that all the incubators will be in the middle and embryologists will not have that much of an accident prone zone because they're not moving from one area of the lab to the other. Everyone just moves to the center, takes the dishes of the embryos and moves towards the working stations. We have our micro manipulator here, which is an RI Integra, state of the art micro manipulator. And we use micro manipulators, as you know, for intracytoplasmic sperm injection or even IMSI. And, um, of course, for embryo biopsy as well, for genetic testing, for pre implantation genetic testing. We have another such benchtop incubator here, 
which again is uh, used to maintain the dishes of the embryos whilst they're being biopsied. So here's a full-scale micromanipulator which is equipped with the laser system as well. I'm going to now take you to the Andrology Lab. Uh, again, by regulations of the European Cells and Tissue Directive, we are supposed to have a separate Andrology Lab where all the sperm work is done. So again, you need a class 2 cabinet here, um, which is being, uh, which, which is blowing uh, great A air, so no manipulation of the sperm can be done outside that environment. So once semen is received, it has to be cleansed and it has to be prepared using certain specialized culture media or the density gradient centrifugation as you've heard in the sperm talk, and then we use centrifuges to spin that sperm down and isolate the motile and the more normal sperm in an ejaculate. As we know that there's a lot of non-motile and um, sperm that are not destined to kind of make it to an embryo in an ejaculate. So you want to filter the motile and the good population of sperm out of the ejaculate. So this is the little andrology lab with a microscope there as well, a phase contrast microscope that is used to look at sperm parameters. And um, that's it. That is the embryology lab. And obviously, both the, the lab is connected to the uh, theater as well. So that's where the eggs come in. And also, the embryos kind of leave the lab and go into the theater.